Hi, I'm your host, Dee Dee Che. Audio Builders TV presents Effects Pedals with Adam Brilla. Adam has over 1,000 pedals in his collection. Through his business, Stompbox Sonic, Adam offers personal consultations to help his customers navigate all those switches and blinking lights so they can bring their music to life. Audio Builders TV is produced by the students of Conquer Carlisle High School with help from Colonial Sound and CCTV. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and subscribe to our mailing list at audiobuildersworkshop.com. <laughs> Audio Builders. Audio Builders Workshop is a work group for the Boston chapter of the Audio Engineering Society. I'm Adam from Stompbox Sonic, and you are watching Audio Builder TV. Today we're going to look at uh, two of the black sheep of the effects family, um, the ring modulator and bit crusher. Um, two very unique and interesting sounding uh, effects um, that can add a lot of uh, texture to music or sounds that you're looking to make. Um, what's uh, interesting about these guys is, you know, a lot of people will complain that they're not very musical sounding or they're too noisy or atonal. And I think that's part of uh, what their charm is all about. Um, the ring modulator uh, has existed um, pretty much since the early days of radio. Um, it was used a lot in, in um, experimental um, and early electronic music and um, was featured pretty prominently on the, uh, the 50s sci-fi movie uh, Forbidden Planet. In fact, the soundtrack, um, because it was used so many um, early electronic um, sounds and instruments, um, it was considered not music. <laughs> so it wasn't, wasn't able to be considered as a you know, typical musical music soundtrack, um, which is kind of wild. Um, but anyway, I, I really like it. It does conjure some sort of sci-fi um, or, or uh, horror movie um, tonalities. Um, you know, I definitely think very, very much like renegade robots um, when I hear it. Um, and it, what initially drew me to it is that uh, it makes, it very clearly makes your guitar sound not like a guitar. Uh, and forces you out and uh, into experiment in, in totally unique and, and different ways. Um, it's most uh, you know recognizable characteristic is that sort of clanging bell like sound, um, and it really doesn't really. A lot of times, depending on how you have it set, it doesn't even translate the notes. So it can be really freeing to um, not have to think in, you know, scales, uh, modes, uh, or, you know, music in the traditional sense that we're often taught it, and get more textural. Um, And at lower settings, it can produce a really nice tremolo sound. So I like that it, it's like having a little analog synthesizer almost, um, and then you can switch back to doing more traditional guitar um, heroics. <laughs> but then you've got your little astromech droid or Dalek hanging out with you. 
Um, so that's the ring modulator and the bit crusher. Um, today we're using the uh, Red Panda bitmap and um, ring modulator that we're using is the uh, Moger Foger um, ring modulator. But the Red Panda bitmap, um, you know, creates this really cool distortion effect. Uh, it's very, can be considered very harsh, uh, very digital sounding. And, you know, I like a lot of the sounds that kind of harken back to the, the early video games of like Atari and, and the early uh, Nintendo games. Um, and basically what the bit crusher is doing is um, it's just reducing the sample rate of the signal going into it. Um, and it's adding some artifacts and, you know, stuff's kind of getting lost in transmission here. Um, and you can set how how crushed the bits are, um, you know, the intensity of the sample reduction. Uh, you can adjust the frequency. So you can get some cool gated effects. Um, you can get some, again, kind of some interesting, like, interstellar transmission. I always think of uh, bit crushers kind of like if you have uh, um, you know either a high resolution high resolution photo and you're saving it at a at a m much lower resolution and it gets kind of um, pixelated and grainy and and you know not quite the same picture um, or similarly if you have a picture and you blow it up really huge and you see all the little squares and um, there's some stuff that's not quite. It, that wasn't in the original picture that's now in there. Um, and what I like on both of these effects is the stuff that it adds as the notes decay. So bent as you bend notes. Some really interesting things happen. So it just um, adds new new character and new textures to the to your playing. And maybe it's something that you would have you know feature prominently, um, or it's something that adds a little bit of interest factor in the background. Um, these also sound really great with. Uh, with bass or drum machine, um, even running vocals through, um, you can get some some really neat sounds out of it. Um, and um, another fun thing you can do is pair it with some delay. And you just create some really cool atmospheric touches.
one setting I like. I want to thank you for watching, and um, you know, hopefully these these effects um, give you some ideas for experimenting with new sounds um, and looking beyond the the traditional uh, category of effects like distortion, fuzz, um, delay, tremolo, chorus, flange, um, and consider something a little more out there. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm Adam from Stompboxonic, and this is Audio Builders Television. Thank you.